When you're looking through ICT's videos, you may tend to wonder, how is this guy so successful at trading? Well, I've spent countless of hours scrolling through a bunch of ICT's videos to figure out which of his concepts he uses the most. And I will go over each one with the last one probably going to shock you. And most of you beginners out there are probably not using the concepts ICT uses, which is a huge mistake as it can improve your trading success a lot. We're going to start off with what ICT describes as the weakest ICT concept, but it is still very, very powerful. Now, the way we can figure out the concept is by looking at gaps that occur between candles' body, and we want the wicks of the candlesticks to be overlapping the gap. That creates a volume balance, and ICT likes to use this as an extra confirmation when price is going towards this draw on liquidity. And he also uses this with another one of his concepts that is way more powerful, but we'll get into that later. One of the best ways to use volume balances in today's modern price action is by using them when they're very strongly biased. And what I mean by that is when price for this example is very bearish and we have these areas within here where we have a couple of wicks and a couple of immediate rebalances as we see right here that is just repeatedly pushing price lower. Then we usually also tend to have volume balances within the candles. As we can see right here, we have a volume bones as I talked about before how to identify them and we can see price reaches up into this volume bones and then right after that moves lower and on top of that we also had the immediate rebalance confirmation that price was respecting it so then we could anticipate both the volume bones and the immediate rebalance to push price lower reaching a more significant draw on liquidity. The next concept could be considered as ICT's most used concept of all and can be combined with the volume balance that we just discussed before. And that alone makes it very powerful, but not better than the ICT concept we will get into later. Now the way we can identify this concept is by looking at three candles. And between the first and third candles wick, we want there to be a gap. And that gap is called a fair value gap. This value gap is used to send price higher or lower, depending on what type of candle the second candle is. If it's a bearish candle, then it is a bearish value gap. But if it's a bullish candle, then it is a bullish value gap. Now a chart example of this value gap would be right here. So we can see we have a value gap up here, and then a value gap down here. Now the first value gap, which is the lowest one, is getting disrespected, while the second one is getting respected. And why is that? Well, there is an obvious reason behind this, because if you draw out a Fibonacci tool that can determine the premium and the discount of this dealing range, you would see that the first Favaldi gap is within a discount and the second Favaldi gap is within a premium. So the second Favaldi gap is more likely going to push price lower than the first Favaldi gap. So let's just see if price is willing to take out this liquidity down here. And we can see price swept this sell side liquidity. Now the way we can combine this with a volume imbalance is by looking at the first and second candle or the second and third candle within a fair value gap as there could be formed a volume imbalance which we can of course take advantage of as there is now two PDRAs supporting price higher. Right here we have a simple normal fair value gap. There isn't really anything special to it but if you look closer to the first and second candle or the second and third candle as I just mentioned before, you can see that we actually have a volume balance within here, a tiny one. And also at the second and third candle, we do indeed also have a volume balance. And it's actually not that common to see two volume balances. In this case, it's just normal to see one either at the second and third candle or the first and second candle. But in this case, we have them both sides. So we're going to mark out both of the sides and right here we have our true imbalance and we can see price reaches down into the fair value gap and also the first volume balance doesn't really quite reach into the second volume balance but still this is enough to push price higher and we can see price reaches buy side liquidity up here. The example of this where we just have one volume balance in this case would be right here. So we can see we have our standard fair value gap but if we look closer to the first and second candle, we can see that we have the volume imbalance. So then we're going to mark out the whole range and we can see price reaches down into that volume balance and the favorable gap then moves higher. 
The next concept which ICT have been using recently has been performing magnificent, but of course it is not every single time it works. That's why we build some rules around it, which I will talk about in just a minute. But first we need to know how to identify this incredible ICT concept. So we just discussed what a favelda gap was. Now this next concept is basically the opposite of a normal favelda gap, but twice as powerful. So let's say that we have a bullish favelda gap and that bullish fair value gap gets closed below. Then it is now considered as an inversion fair value gap, which will be utilized as the opposite of a normal fair value gap. So if the fair value gap was bullish, then it will become bearish inversion fair value gap if it gets closed beneath, and vice versa if it's a bearish fair value gap. You can see right here that we have a normal fair value gap, and this fair value gap should be used to push price higher. But let's just see what happens we can see that price makes a close beneath this fair value gap. And that means it is now an inversion fair value gap. So this inversion fair value gap should now be used to push price lower as it was a bullish fair value gap before. And then as I mentioned before, it becomes a bearish inversion fair value gap. We can see right here, price trades up into this inversion fair value gap. So now we should see price just move lower. For example, reaching these data lows down here, which is a very strong draw on liquidity. And we can see price reached the data lows. But the reason this inversion for value gap is so powerful is because it can be combined with a volume imbalance. So again, with the fair value gap, there's now two PDRA supporting price in moving higher. Now why this is better than a normal fair value gap is because we get twice as much confirmation. As when price forms an inversion fair value gap, we disrespect a normal fair value gap, which means the bias has turned. And if we combine this with a volume balance and a fair value gap, then we get twice as much confirmation because price have just disrespected a volume balance and a fair value gap. So we basically had a lot of confirmation to deal with, increasing the chance of our trade succeeding. You can see right here that we have a normal fair value gap. And this fair value gap got closed above creating an inversion fair value gap, which is bullish because the fair value gap previously was bearish. But there's a bit more to this inversion fair value gap, because if you look closer up here at the second and third candle, you can see between the two bodies, we created a volume imbalance. So right here, we have disrespected two significant PDA rates, which is a lot of confirmation in itself. But remember the golden rule of ICT is that when price disrespected free PDA rates, we could be anticipating a reversal. And already price have disrespected two significant PDA rates, so we could kind of anticipate a reversal from here. Now if you were to take a trade entry, you would enter either at the volume balance high or at the start of the inversion for value gap. Then you would put your stop loss at a place where you would anticipate price to close beneath the inversion fair value gap or exit the trade when price closes beneath the inversion fair value gap. And then you would want to target a significant draw on liquidity, such as buy side liquidity. In this case, this would make a 2.2 risk reward ratio. Now, the last concept I've noticed ICT uses almost every time you trade. And we can even combine it to all the concepts we just talked about, which makes them twice as powerful. And it's by using what is known as the consequent encouragement and upper slash lower quadrant. And this is basically where we see all the good algorithmic signatures, which give us the confirmation we need to have a successful trade like ICT. Now, the way we can identify this is by using what is known as a Fibonacci tool. By the way, here's my settings for my Fibonacci tool. And drag this Fibonacci tool from the bottom all the way to the top of one of the concepts we've just talked about in this video. Then you will see some areas which are called 0 0.25, 0 0.5, which is known as the consequent encouragement, and then the 0 0.75, or the upper consequent encouragement and lower quadrant. And we can use these areas to see if the market is specifically willing to utilize the PDA race as support. And this is very useful to us traders which are trying to get as much confirmation as possible. This is actually a very good example of how we can utilize this Fibonacci tool. So you can see the first time we reach into this fair value gap, we fail to reach the upper quadrant, which is very bullish. But then the second time we reach into this fair value gap, price just reaches the upper quadrant and makes us very, very, very small mohawk through it. 
and then we rally higher, reaching buy side liquidity. And after we've reached buy side liquidity, we could anticipate this PTA range not working as we should be pretty bearish. But in this case, we are in a kind of consolidation. So we reach into this Favaldi gap again. And as you can see, this time we make a larger Mohawk into the upper quadrant than the last time. Price again moves higher. Then now we comes to this area over here. Here we can see price have just reached into this Favaldi gap several times. And one of the times, we just reached the consequent encouragement, then moved higher, reached down even lower, reaching almost a lower quadrant, and then from there moved higher again. And lastly, we spiked all the way through the Favaldi gap, closing beneath it, creating an inversion Favaldi gap. So this is how we can use the Fibonacci tool to identify where price is going to respect this fair Favaldi gap. There is a very strong algorithmic signature, and that is when price fails to reach these areas, the lower quadrant, consequent encouragement, and upper quadrant, as it shows that price is very sensitive around these areas, meaning we could anticipate a strong reaction. And that actually happened today. We can see price failed to reach that lower quadrant, and then from there rallied lower, sweeping sell side liquidity. And now we are slowly starting to return back into this fair value gap again. Thanks for watching, but there is one concept which ICT uses a lot, which I have left out for a reason, as I've made a separate video about it, and it's going to be shown on the screen now.